Hey guys, just got back from Austin, Texas to debut the GX and the TX. The pre-order guide has just gone online for both of those vehicles. I'm going to do separate videos. And in this one, I'm going to go over all the specs, packages, details, other than pricing that we have for the upcoming third generation GX 550. Let's go. I'll put the link to this pre-order guide in the description, but let's start with powertrains. And then there's also some things here. Like we have some images that I wasn't able to go over that they're only available on the Japanese press site, but let's go over powertrains real quick because so far what we have announced is the 550 with 349 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque, 10 speed auto, 8,000 pounds of towing capacity on the base grade as well as the over trail. But we actually have images here of not only the twin turbo V6, but we have images of the hybrid powertrain. And I was hoping I was had my fingers crossed that we would get the twin turbo V6 hybrid, the, the iForce Max that we see in the Sequoia and the Tundra, and we'll likely see in the upcoming LX. Unfortunately, they're giving us the four cylinder hybrid, which is, it's not bad. We haven't driven it yet, but it is going to be seen in the new Tacoma. I think, I mean, off the top of my head, it's 326 horsepower and a bunch of torque, well over 400 pound feet of torque. In terms of power and torque, it matches up well with the twin turbo V6, but we'll get slightly better fuel economy. So we get what, 17 miles per gallon with the twin turbo V6. We'll probably see over 20 miles per gallon with the hybrid setup, which is great. That's a huge improvement over the 15, 16 miles per gallon uh, that we have on the GX460 V8. But the biggest thing that I think overlanders will want to use is the 2400 watts of continuous power, AC power outlets throughout the vehicle, just like we see in the new Tacoma. I personally would be wanting to go for the, the hybrid powertrain over the twin turbo V6, offers similar, similar torque and power, better fuel efficiency, and more versatility with the electrical output. I think it's safe to say that this is the electric motor and the bell housing, but I don't think this is the 10 speed automatic transmission. This could be an eight speed automatic. Check this out. Look how long this 10 speed auto is here. And then you have the transfer case right here. The transfer case looks actually slightly different on both of them. And both of them will be four by four, I would assume full time, but more than likely this is the eight speed automatic transmission that we see in the Tacoma, but it could be wrong. Time will tell us. So stay tuned. We don't have official details on this powertrain other than the images. And when could we expect to see that hybrid powertrain? My guess would be 2025. Uh, calendar year. So it launches early 2024 and maybe availability in the hybrid in 2025. All right. So this is a lot to digest. We'll get into the trim levels actually last because that is going to be a grind fest of details and segmentation, but let's get into the colors. I hadn't gone all over the, over the covers when I did my walk arounds, imminent white pearl. Uh, so the ones with an asterisk are premium colors. So white and the earth color, which is an exclusive to the overtrail those are going to cost you more. The rest, uh, I did a walk around on Nebula, Nebula Gray Pearl. We're seeing Atomic Silver reprise its role in the Lexus lineup. Incognito is going to be on this. And we saw this pink color in the IS500 F Sport Performance. We also see it on the TX500 H F Sport Performance now as well. Caviar Sparkly Black, Nori Green Pearl is going to be a very popular color. Then you also have Nightfall Mica. Interior colors, Dapple Gray, I haven't seen that. I've only seen black interior and black and olive so far in person. We've seen dapple gray on the RZ before, um, and saddle tan is going to be a very popular option, I think. And then the Chateau is going to be very popular, I think, on the over trails as well. You only get two interior trims. Uh, there's no wood, but they, they look like wood and they feel really good, but I only saw the black grained trim. Then you have the brown grain trim as well. All right. So pretty much looks like every interior option is available with every exterior paint, which is a great thing to see until you go over to the over trail. And then you have some limitations, for example, like nebula gray pearls, just not available or is nightfall mica. Uh, but the rest of the trim levels come with your options there. Going through the images, we have, I believe this is Atomic Silver. Again, the lighting's a bit weird. It's easier to tell in person. Uh, this looks like Nebula Gray. Here's a new Earth color. There's the Nori Green looking great. This is not the Overtrail Plus. This is just the standard Overtrails because the roof is not blacked out, for example. But we do still have those large 33-inch wheels. There's Nori Green with a paint-matched roof. Eminent White Pearl actually looks pretty cool here with the, the white and black Stormtrooper going on. 
We have the base over trail here uh, with the sparkly black caviar. There's imminent white pearl on, I mean, luxury. Look at these huge 22 inch wheels. It looks really cool with 22s on it. Haven't seen it in person with 22s, only the 20s and the 18s at this point in time. Okay, there's Nightfall Micah. Nightfall Micah does not look like this, ladies and gentlemen. In person, it's very dark. It's almost like a purplish, blackish blue. It does not look, this almost looks like ultrasonic blue mica, which is not, not the case. Here's your different wheel options. Here are your 20 inch wheel options, which you have two different shades of, of the machine finish. And then you have uh, the huge 22 inch wheels, which I, I actually like these wheels quite a bit for uh, the luxury models. Interior, so here we're looking at dapple gray and you have this interior like orange accommodation, which I don't know how to feel about that orange felt like piece on the door inserts. Here's a Chateau with olive. This is an over trail where you can only get the olive and Chateau and over trails only have two rows of seats. Here's an over trail with the black and the olive, which I saw at, uh, in Austin. Here's the third row of seats. This is the first time we've seen the, uh, at least I've, I'm looking at the seven row or the seven seater option with the three row. And then this looks like to have some good space between the second and third row here. Here is that saddle tan. Uh, with the matching door inserts as well with the, the sunshades. Uh, let's keep moving. I guess this is the details on the front seats. Here's an over trail with, oh my gosh, look at the over trail with the cool kit on the top of the vehicle. Uh, that looks pretty badass. Now, I almost wish, wish this portion down here was blacked out as well, but you know, it's pretty good over. Look how big that aluminum skid plate is. And the skid plate that I saw didn't have the Lexus logo on it. It said Lexus across the front. Am I seeing some pod body panel guards here on the side of the vehicle? Those look a bit ridiculous. Maybe maybe they're good for so you don't bang your door on a tree or something. But here's the luggage rack on top of the roof rails, which the roof rails are, are more uh, rugged on the over trails. Okay, and I think I've gone over all the images I wanted to. And now grab your snacks and drinks because we're going to break down the trim levels. And I'm also going to take a stab at pricing. Let's start with the GX Premium, the base model. We already talked about uh, the, the performance of it, the engine. Um, also standard is the Torsen Limited Slip Differential with the locking feature. 20 inch wheels, uh, triple beam headlights are standard. Like I mentioned in my walk around of the premium model, running boards are standard, power folding mirrors are standard, power rear door is standard, and power tilt and slide moonroof with roof rails. Scene for seven doesn't look like there are captured chairs option here on this model. Heated and ventilated seats are standard. Uh, also a leather wrapped steering wheel. We have six USB ports, 400 watt AC power, 12.3 inch MID behind the steering wheel standard. Uh, you have ambient lighting even on the base model and 10 speaker Lexus premium sound, not the Mark Levinson available here. Lexus safety system plus 3.0 and blind spot monitor is standard. It, it has the large 14 inch screen. You also have safety connect for 10 years service connect for 10 years, remote connect for three years. So that's like, you know, starting your car remotely for three years. And of course, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, et cetera. You can get a cold area package that gives you the heated steering wheel, windshield wiper, de-icer, headlamp washer, and fast response interior heater. So GX Premium Plus, which is probably going to be the most common model you see out there. Just like I wouldn't be surprised right now if GX Premium Plus is the best selling model out there on the market. So power rear door with kick sensor. So you get the kick sensor upgrade here. You get the LED fog lights, which is great. And the model I actually walked around in Austin, the premium model must have been a base premium because I don't remember it having the fog lights on it. You're getting a power tilting and telescopic steering wheel on the base premium. It's actually going to be manual with a flip down switch. Thematic ambient illumination here, which is an upgrade from the interior ambient illumination. So the thematic gives you the choice of about 50 different colors where this one is just going to be kind of like a gold overglow in the GX Premium. All right, so with the power steering wheel, you get memory steering wheel and memory driver's seat and outside mirrors. You have second row heated outboard seats. You get the wireless phone charger. You get a panoramic view monitor, 360 camera coming on the GX Premium Plus. That's pretty cool. Power folding third row seat where the non plus premium would be manual folding. The premium and the premium plus both have parking sensors, thank God, but the rear pedestrian detection comes standard on the premium plus models and above. So options for the premium plus, of course, of course that cold area package, like on the standard premium, uh, captain's chairs is an option here on the GX premium. So it'd go down to six seats. And then also you can get the digital key where you use your phone as the key. All right, moving on to the luxury grade. 
which includes a premium and premium plus features, your towing goes down. So you go down to about 7,000 pounds of towing compared to the 8,000 pounds of towing. It could be largely due to the weight of the, the large 22 inch wheels compared to the 20 inch wheels on the premium. You have puddle lamps on the outside mirrors as well. Maybe they illuminate as you get close to the truck. Interior, you have 10 way heated and ventilated power driver's seat. And here's the thing. So that gives you vertical lumbar, but now you also have front massaging seats, which we don't even have in the LX. There's a lot of zings on the LX because the GX is now the truck to get in the Lexus lineup. It looks better. It's just as big, assuming since they have the wheel, the same wheelbase now, and it has better technology. And the interior design is not as busy compared to the LX either. All right, so you upgrade from new Lux to semi-inline leather seats. You have four-way adjustable headrests. So not only up and down, but front and back with those headrests. I don't know if I've actually seen that on a Lexus SUV before. I don't even know if the LS has that. All right, second row manual sunshades. The Toyota Grand Highlander at $43,000 comes standard with second row manual sunshades. The GX Luxury, which is probably gonna cost $70,000, finally gets them. All right, illuminated door sills as well. You have your same options here compared to the Premium Plus model, but the big addition is now you can finally get the Marky Mark Levinson 1800 watt 21 speaker surround sound system. Mark Levinson is one of the best sound systems out on the luxury market, no doubt. So let's head to luxury plus. Towing capacity goes down even more, meaning it's heavier because it's adding adaptive variable suspension. So the ride quality on the luxury plus model is going to be incredible despite it having massive 22 inch wheels. You can stiffen the suspension or loosen it up for a more comfortable ride with this AVS. You also get Power extending running boards that we saw on the Tacoma. Make sure to watch my Tacoma walk arounds in Hawaii. We also have dynamic sky panoramic glass roof. So not only do we have a large panel roof, but this with the flick of the switch will dim out the sun. It's almost like a cloudy overcast at the top. We see this in the Lexus RZ. I think that was actually the first vehicle to debut it. But that the RZ's panel roof is very segmented. Uh, so I'm really interested to see what this one looks like. I'm going to sift through the pictures while we're on topic to see what I can find. Okay, so here are roof options. This is the Overtrail standard sunroof, which is uh, standard on the premium model. Here's the big panel roof, and I don't see any bars underneath, but you know it's a render, but I don't see any bars underneath uh, bisecting this dynamic sky panel roof. The LX doesn't even have a panel roof, let alone a dynamic sky one that is flick like dimmable with the flick of the switch. And here is a GX without a sunroof, which for our market, we won't have this option to get to your GX without a sunroof. It comes standard on our most basic premium grade. <laughs> so interesting, there will be GXs offered around the world with lesser equipped models. All right, back to the luxury plus grade, we have the Marky Mark standard. You also have the digital review mirror standard, which is, I, I don't even think it's an option on the previous models. And you also have the cool box, which, some of you guys might not want to have that standard, maybe as an option because it, it reduces your interior cap capacity underneath the armrest. And the Luxury Plus doesn't lock you into captain's chairs. It's still an option here, just like the previous grades. All right, so moving to the Overtrail, it is built off the premium model. So it's gonna be somewhere probably between luxury features and premium plus features. Now, the only way you can get electronic KDSS, which is not available on the LX, is on the, the Overtrail and Overtrail Plus. So definitely far more sophisticated off-road suspension. And we actually see it on the Land Cruiser 300 as an option. So it's finally coming here to the GX as well. It has adaptive variable suspension as well that we see from the Luxury Plus model. Not only do we have the center lock, we have the rear locking diff, and to get crawl control with turn assist, downhill assist control, and multi-train select, you have to go for the overtrail models. We know about the 18 inch wheels, the 33 inch all-terrain tires, black utility roof rails, headlamp washers, LED fog lamps, windshield wiper, de-icer. So it has a cold weather package built in. Seating for five, there's no third row of seats. I repeat that over and over. Heated steering wheel is standard for USB-C ports. Why would you have six if there's no one in the back? But Hey, maybe people back there would have appreciated those USB-Cs if they're going to be spending some time behind the third row or the second row. Some options for the GX Overtrail, not the Overtrail Plus, is a panoramic view monitor as well as a multi-train monitor and the, the cool box. So the Overtrail Plus will be at least as expensive as a Luxury Plus, I'm, I'm anticipating and 
stay tuned to afterwards. I'll go over pricing or at least my expectations. So power rear door with kick sensor and outside mirrors with puddle lamps is standard over the base model. You get a power tilting and telescopic steering wheel, unlike the manual on the GX Overtrail base model. You get thematic ambient illumination here on the Overtrail Plus. Memory seat here, heated outboard seats in the back, wireless phone charger, 10-way heated and ventilated a power driver's seat like we see on the luxury model, for example. Massaging front seats like the luxury model as well. Four-way adjustable headrest, second row manual sunshade, illuminated door sills. You have rear pedestrian detection here. And, and interestingly, the Mark Levinson isn't standard here. It is an option on the Overtrail Plus. Individual options on all models is going to be traffic jam assist. It's not my favorite cup of tea. Uh, you also have a head-up display, and that explains why the GX Premium I saw in Austin, Texas had it because it's an individual option, as well as the tonneau cover, which is no longer standard. How about that? All right, now time for pricing. Well, the GX start. Let's just say the GX starts at about sixty thousand dollars. So GX Premium, sixty-five thousand dollars, probably after destination. GX Premium Plus around seventy thousand dollars. GX Luxury seventy-five thousand dollars. Luxury Plus. $80,000 and the GX Overtrail is probably going to be maybe $78,000 and maybe Overtrail plus like $82,000, $83,000. So maybe take a screenshot, see how close I am when pricing is actually unveiled. And uh, I can't be too far off because of where the, the GX sits right now. But as a result, the GX will be more expensive than ever, but we have a better vehicle than we've ever had before with more technology, more safety, better truck, more capable, larger, et cetera. The list goes on. A better powertrain as well. I mean, that's subjective because some of you guys rather take the tried and the true VA over the twin turbo V6, but the twin turbo V6, more power, way more torque and a better automatic transmission. The reception from you guys for the Lexus GX has been overwhelmingly positive. I would say if that was a review on Steam game reviews, overwhelmingly positive. I think the GX would fall under that from the design to the features. I know the interior might be a bit basic and, and maybe not as luxurious looking for some of you out there. But for me, this interior does everything I need it to from a functionality standpoint. Do I wish I had more switches here for climate control? Yes, but I've gotten used to the Lexus touch system and their automatic climate control is really good. 99% of the time. I can't say that for a lot of other manufacturers with their automatic climate control. But I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. If you're excited for the GX, of course you are. Smash the like button. The media drive should be around when this vehicle launches. So that could be around January. I'll be there for that. We might get Forerunner or Land Cruiser revealed before January as well. So definitely come back. I can't wait to share more Toyota body on frame pickup truck SUV news with you guys. Have a great day and peace.